Ladies and gents, uh, evening to all, uh, and those on webcast and the like. Um, part three of this series, as someone reminded me, this is the third series. The first one was boot camp, which is the 12 videos. Boot camp, very much the, the, the theory behind trading psychology and, and, and the risk management and the like. Uh, we did the master class, which then followed on six looking at different methodologies and systems, which included, for example, CFD trading system, included index and FX and the like, um, of which we will touch on some of it this evening as well. Um, and I don't know why those are doing weird, nonetheless. Um, and then we came to the trader's life, which is the last part, which we've done the first two in the series, and now this evening we're doing the third part. The first part was very much the process. And the key point to the process was, what do we want from our trading? And what we don't want from our trading is another job. We don't want to be a slave to the market. We don't want to be you know, sitting in front of screens from 8 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, because then we may as well go and work at a bank or get a real job or something like that. What, what we look for is freedom from ties that bind, and we spoke about that in the process. The second video was talking around the money around, around trading. And what I mean by money is how much do we need in order to live off our trading and how much do we need in order to trade different products. If you want to trade the SA40 uh, mini contract versus trading the DAX real contract, there are differences. You know, one's four rand a point, one's 25 euros a point, which is at current exchange rates about 400 rand a point. And, and that, that, that obviously has implications for a bunch of different reasons. And we went through that in the money process. Um, and those two videos are online, and this video will be there uh, by tomorrow morning, let's say lunchtime at the same time. As I talk about it, it's about integrating trading into our lives, but making it meaningful without making it a time constraint. I, I always talk about myself as being a lazy trader. I talk about trying to get to the point where my, my trading up until this year was taking me about half an hour a week. And I was trying to get it down to about 10 minutes a week. I went the other way entirely. It's now taking me you know, sometimes as much as 20 minutes a day. And I look at that 20 minutes a day, and I'll touch on it in a bit. That's approximately 18 minutes too much. And, and what I mean by that, and I know what happens. When we start trading, it's great fun. I hear that. The reality, if you're having fun trading, you're probably losing money. Um, <laughs> good trading is boring. You know, good trading is like any other, anything else that you've mastered. It ultimately, trading becomes boring if you're successful at it because it's not flying by the seat of your pants. It's not waiting for another minister to be fired or another orange bigot to win an election or whatever the case may be. It's about following a very set set of rules, doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason, discipline. It is immensely boring. So what we want to do is, with our trading, we want to maximize our return and minimize our effort. And that, you know, the classic, the classic Protestant upbringing says, well, you can't do that. In order to succeed, you need to work hard. Um, and that's not true. That's patently not true. Everyone has that friend who's never worked hard a day in their life, yet they seem to have more money. Everyone in this room works harder than everyone else, and yet we have got no money. Uh, and then, of course, there's Howard Buffett, who you will know as the eldest son of Warren Buffett, whose father gave him a billion dollars and said no more because he didn't want to spoil him. Howard was just born lucky. <laughs> I know. Don't spoil me either. And, and Howard and, and Warren Buffett will both tell you that that was just because of the luck of the womb born to the right person at the right time at the right place. Um, so we, but we can. We can maximize return. We can minimize effort. That's what we want to do. It doesn't happen overnight. This is not something, you know, like anything else, we, we, if we're going to learn a skill, we need to accept that it's going to take time to master that skill. Trading is one of those weird things where we open an account, we do the FICA, that's the really, really hard part. We drop 10,000 Rand in and we think, ha, I will be rich by weekend. <laughs> No, you'll be poor, you'll be bloodied, you'll be battered, there might be real blood, there will probably be tears. Why? Because we never occurred to us that we need to learn anything. Now, in a, to a degree, I'm talking to converted. You folks have given up your Tuesday evening to come and listen to me speak for an hour. You understand that there needs to be a level of, 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 of learning and understanding. We need to understand this process is going to be slow, like anything else. A lot of what we need to learn is the emotional side of it. I will go through my, my, my 721 system this evening, um, and that system's fine, and, and you know, you'll have the specs of it. Can you go and trade it tomorrow? No. And there's a bunch of reasons why, and we'll roll through that. Mostly it's about trust. Trust in me, trust in yourself, trust in the system. We need to develop those in, in the process. We need to remove the stress from it, and we need to, as I said, make sure there's minimal uh, time that is required for it. Um, strong systems, strong processes. This is 
Trading is very much, it is about process, it is about system. One of the exercises I tell folks to do is to make a flow chart of your trading system. You go to a website like, I think it's bubble.us or something, you can do a, a bubble graphic. Do a flow chart of your trading system. And on the surface, that seems like the easiest thing in the world. But you start running through it and you start seeing those levels of complexity in the trading systems. And as human beings, we are taught that complexity is a requirement for success. And that's not true. That's not even slightly true. And in fact, a lot of success is, is innately very uncomplex. I mean, you know, take, okay, so Apple Park aside, yes, an iPhone's a complicated thing. Amazon, what do they do? They deliver stuff from warehouse to you. Yeah, logistics, but it's not massively complicated. Yeah, you know, Tesla makes electric vehicles. The first electric vehicle was made 100 years ago. Yeah, th that sort of thing. We, we, we want complexity, but in truth, what we really should be trying to get is simplicity. Simplicity makes it easier, makes less space for error, makes it less stressful on us, and gives us a higher chance of, of potentially succeeding. Needs to support us, needs to give us the time. I talk about freedom from ties that bind. We want to do what we do, when we do, why we want to do it, not because we have a job and a boss and, and KRA is coming up because it's end of year and that, that sort of thing. We want that financial support. We want that time. We don't want to spend hours and hours every day trading. We don't want to spend hours and hours stressed about our trading. Now, this is not going to happen in a hurry. Someone to, earlier today said to me, look, I've watched all the videos, and there are, this is the 24th first video, so they've watched 20 videos of, 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 of content, 20 hours, and he's like, so when can I expect to start making money? And I said, oh, about 2022. And this was over email, and I could feel his, 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 his anguish and displeasure over the email. <laughs> now, he obviously has a hot date on Saturday. He, wants, he needs money by Friday. This, this 2022 is absolutely not cracking it. Why? Because we need to scale up. The position sizes that I trade these days, if I was trading it yeah, even just five years ago would have stressed the heck out of me. You know, it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I can trade the size that I trade, and it doesn't cause me stress. And that process is slow. One of the biggest mistakes we make as trading is we trade something. No, the two biggest mistakes. I'll touch on both of them right now. We trade something, whatever it is. We have a good Monday morning, and we think, ha ha, so we increase the size that we trade. And frankly, we're not emotionally ready for it. Yes, you had a good Monday morning. You might even have had a good Monday day. You might have had a good October. You might even have had a good year. Typically, what I do is I scale up maybe every six months, but usually once a year. I will scale, I will scale my positions bigger. And then I get to a point where two things happen, where I'm at the point where I'm emotionally comfortable, but if I go beyond it, I'm not. And then I scale back to where I am. And I, the second thing that happens in that space is I get to a point where I start to worry around liquidity. Now, that depends what you're trading. You know, in certain issues, if you're trading a major FX currency cross, really, liquidity is a problem if you're Bezos. Liquidity is not a problem for us. Um, but we scale too quick. And don't underestimate the difference between potentially losing 1,000 Rand in a trade and losing 2,000 Rand in a trade. It's not double the pain. It's quadruple the pain. There's all that research that says the, the impact of losses versus the, 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 the pain of a loss versus the, the, the rush of, of, of a win. And how that, the pain of the losses is not just, it's not linear. It's not, you know, 2,000 is not twice as painful as 1,000, it's four times as painful. And we need to do that process of scaling up bigger because even as a successful trader, you're going to have losing trades, you're going to have losing periods, you're going to have drawdowns. We need to be able to manage that process. The second thing, which is our biggest challenge that we have into, when it comes to your point, you've suggested that I should kick butts this evening. Um, I have a sore Achilles, but aside from that, I have pointy shoes, so that's perfect. The second problem, what we do, and I will wager that everyone in this room, certainly I put myself in that if we have tried trading, we trade this for a bit, and it's lacquer, and then we hear about that one, and we trade this one, and then we try, and we don't, yeah, okay, enough nodding in the room to understand that. If you're not committing to something, you're nowhere. It's like, you know, you go speed dating every Friday and then you wonder why at the end of the year you're not married. It's because all you ever do is speed dating. Not knocking speed dating. You might have had a good time in the process. But, you know, if, if you want to get married, at some point you've got to stop speed dating and start slow dating. Make sense? And that's what we do in trading. And I know. 
been there, done that, got the T-shirt, changed the T-shirt because I didn't like the color or the size or the fabric. We start trading something, and then someone's like, oh, but have you, oh, but this, and there are hundreds. Oh, I, mean, I, know, I know stacks of traders, and when I, okay, let's let rephrase that, of profitable traders. I know, like, you know, there, there are a lot of profitable traders out there, and they do it differently. Do I go and do it their way? No. Why not? I don't know what their way is, and it doesn't matter. Are they making more money than me? Honestly, I don't know. And the only way to really quantify that is to come back in 10 years and measure. So it's about finding something, making it yours, or copying it verbatim, whichever the case may be, and then doing it. And how long do you do it for? Frankly, a minimum of a year. I would say three. And the one thing that starts to become very apparent is that ain't no one going to be rich by the weekend unless you're getting married to a rich person on the weekend. <laughs> this takes time. The system that I'm looking at this evening, the 721, is a system that I traded back in 2002, 3, 4, 5. Um, and then I started trading my lazy system, and then I've gone back to this one because it worked. The lazy works better for longer time frames. We'll talk about that in a moment. But you know, it, I, I traded this for three years or so, at the, it just you know, as I said, around 2002. Uh, when I joined Standard Bank, I couldn't trade compliance and all of that sort of game, et cetera, et cetera. The point is, this has been a long journey for me. This has taken a long time. Beginning of this year, I decided that I needed to put a lot more reliance on my trading, from, for, for, on my trading and make more revenue from trading. Um, and importantly, I wanted to earn foreign currency. Um, Zars are lacquer, but so are euros. Um, and I chose euros for a particular reason, and we can touch on that in a bit as well. I'm agnostic. Euros, dollars, I mean, pick a currency. I don't know which is going to be the winner at the end of the day. I just want something that's not czar, um, and that's just because czar will depreciate because of inflation differentials. But for, so, so this is a journey I've been going through this year, and this is where this pre these series of presentations have come from. And it's been a learning process, but it's also been a very slow process, and that's fine. You know, I'm still, so I'm trading DAX, um, but I'm, I'm trading it small. I'm testing it. I'm, I'm trying the waters in the DAX for no good reason, except that I've never traded the DAX before. And it's like, okay, so let's do this gently. Let's, let's not jump in and at, at 25 euros a point. Let's not go trade, you know, 10 contracts a point and, and, and die within week one. Let's start this gently and try it. And how long do I try it for? Typically, I do it for a year. At the end of the year, I look back and I say, so my target is to trade five contracts. I'm on one. I reckon I'll be at five contracts by 2020. Understand what we're achieving here, though. If we do this right, there is a point in our future, within the next three, five, maybe seven years into our future, at which we are completely 100% independent in the sense that we can make money anywhere, anytime, consistently. There's nothing, that, that, is, that is the pinnacle. And yeah, seven years, three years, five years, these are all lengthy time frames. I get that. But understand that the goal way exceeds what, 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 the, what the sacrifice is. We, can, we give up the time, we get something that is significantly meaningful. We get that freedom from ties that bind. You go to work on Monday because you like the job. You don't like the job, you don't go to work on Monday. It's whale season, you go to Jürgensfontein or some place I can't pronounce down in the eastern and western Cape. I don't know, it's by still by top 10 whales watching spot in the world. And you go there for three months and watch whales. Because why? Because they have internet access there. So you can trade from whatever it might be called. So I'm going to go through the system. Uh, then I'm going to go through the practicality. The point of this evening is around that process. What am I talking about the process? So one of the things I've discovered, I've been trading the 721. I've been trading it in the hourly chart. Because at the beginning of the year, I thought to myself, you know what? Hourly charts, my job, if I spend my day watching the stock market, I can claim that I am working because this is what I do, right? So I can do this, and I can therefore trade an hourly chart. And in the past, I've traded 15-minute charts. So hourly is distinctly lazy. Except that hourly is like, man, it takes time, and you've got to check things. And it's not so bad when I'm in a trade, but I, I slip entries at points. Um, so I think I, I'm long at the moment, and I think I'm long if I mm, – I think I went – was it? Was it Friday? Ah. When I got that long trigger, I happened to be recording or something. Um, in fact, I, it was early in the week, I was recording a podcast with Christia, and I missed the entry. So I get it 40 minutes later, and this time I actually happened to also get it 50 points cheaper. So, hey, win-win. But it's that point of, okay, hang on a second. I, I'm missing entries. 
even on an hourly. And you know, if I'm only watching whales, I can't be watching whales and watching hourly charts. I, I've got to pick one between the other. So I'm currently in the daily, sorry, in the hourly, but I'm going to change it to the daily at the end of the year, um, and I'm doing DAX and daily, but we'll come to that in a moment. This works in indices or FX. I've never tried it on equity. I would expect it to not work on equity, not work, for a simple reason, volatility. I'm a trend-based trader. I need trends. Equity gives you trends, but it gives you massive volatility. It also gives you uh, individual equity risk. Something happens, an announcement, famous brands comes out, and it turns out that they can't sell burgers in the UK, and the stock drops whatever it drops on the day. And if you're on the wrong side of that coin, then, well, you can't sell burgers in the UK either because you've got no cash left. I'm an index or an FX trader. They are less volatile. I want to do less trades, not more trades. Why? Because trades cost me money. Every trade, I've got to cross the spread. That's an expense. I've got to pay transaction to buy. I've got to pay transaction to sell. That's an expense. When I get into a trade, I'm at maximum risk because my stop loss is maximum away. So I want to do less trades, not more trades. Um, I'm trading DAX, uh, SA40, and GBP Euro. Why GBP Euro? Because <laughs> I only trade major currencies. The majors are uh, sterling, euro, yen, and dollar. But I want to trade uh, the DAX. Why do I want to trade the DAX? Time zone. I don't want to trade S&P. S&P is a great thing to trade, but it trades at times when I want to be drinking. So don't want to trade S&P. Um, so I needed to look for something else. FTSE at times has been too closely correlated to our market, less so now. But back in the days, you know, when we had a number of our big stocks were big stocks in the FTSE, uh, Billiton, Old Mutual, um, the one that left, SAB Miller, British American Tobacco, so on and so on. So there was too much correlation. So I started looking at the DAX. The DAX is a great market. For, the IG, for IG, DAX is their most popular index. Now remember, IG is not in the US, so that's, you know, outside of America, DAX is the most popular index. When you trade DAX, you trade in euros. So then it's a case of, okay, so now I'm trading DAX in euros, so I want a euro IG account. Because if I've got a sterling IG account, every time I do a DAX trade, what do they do? Currency conversion. They're charging me for that. I don't care if they're charging me eight pennies. That's eight pennies that's not in my pocket. So I want a euro account, I trade DAX. Cool. Now I need a currency that also trades in euro, GBP euro. So now what have I got? I've got a euro currency base and, a, and, a, and, a, and an index base. So now my profit, my account, my loss is all in euros. Single currency, no currency conversion costs all over the place. And then I trade SA40, Aussie, top 40 futures, call it what you will. I trade that in rands and czar. I love czar, I, you know, eat czar, et cetera, et cetera. But it gives me offshore and it gives me local. And the DAX is the same time frame as us. 721, I'll show you some pictures in a moment, and we've got a session coming up later. I'll talk about it. I'm not, I, the time is tightish, but in a couple of Saturdays, I've got an hour and a half on it. So it's a 721, I'm using a simple moving average, SMAs. Um, my crosses of the moving average triggers the trade. Higher candle confirms, or lower candle if you're going short. I will take long and short positions. I'm completely agnostic as to what, whether I'm long or short. I'm a trend-based trader. If the trend is down, then I'll be short. If the trend is up, then I'll be long. That, that, I, have, I have no stress on that whatsoever. I always do a two-step entry process. Trigger, confirm. The reason is quite simple, is that, for obviously, is that oftentimes, or however many times, a trade will trigger but not confirm. What that means is if you'd only acted on trigger, that's a trade that would have seen you stop at a loss. By saying two-step entry process, it reduces the number of trades. Importantly, it reduces the number of losing trades. It doesn't have impact on the number of winning trades. Because if that's a winning trade, it will, it will trigger. It will confirm that trigger. If it's a losing trade, I get the first step, not the second. And don't get me wrong, often a trade will trigger and confirm and you still lose money. But it does reduce the number of trades. And the time between the trigger and the confirmation can be the next candle. It can be five or six or seven or eight candles later. I'll wait for as long as it potentially takes. Visually, I'm going to come back to that in a moment, but visually it looks like that. So if that is candle one, in which I get the seven crossover, seven going above 21, that is my trigger. The next candle 
where the seven remains above 21, that closes higher, I exit. Sorry, I enter. <laughs> Between one and two, they, that, that could be the very next candle. That could be, I think the longest I've waited is seven candles for that confirmation to happen. I'm getting in at the close. That two candle here, you'll note that it's nice and close. Sometimes that second candle closes up on the ceiling. What do you do? You get in. That's your confirmation. You know what I quite like, what I very much like, is to get into a trade and, where it's moving, where it's already happening, where it's going in your favor. Feels like you're getting on the right bus. The last thing you want to do is get in a trade that's going against you from day one. It's like you wanted to go west, but you're on the bus going east. It's like you're on the wrong bus. You want that trade to be going in your favor. And this, I, 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 I suspect, and I, I've had this debate with people, I think that the two-step entry process is one of the most critical parts of trading. If you're in a trading position, you want it in your favor. Two candles in your favor is doubly good than one candle. And also, because you're using moving average crossovers, which is a, you know, it's not a, it's not by any stretch a complicated, fancy process, adds this, an extra level of, 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 of security to you. The last point, and we were chatting about it a bit beforehand, is I'm a trend-based trader, so sometimes markets go sideways. What happens when markets go sideways for a trend-based trader? You lose money. So there's many things we can try and do. We can try and be clever and determine when is a market going sideways and when is it going up or down. And I've spent my entire trading life trying to determine that, and the answer is not a clue, not even a little one. I've tried ADXs. I've tried this. I've tried rabbit feet. I've tried everything. I have, so I get every trade. But a sideways market, if you've got a two-step entry process, often trigger, nah, nothing happens. Trigger a short, nothing happens. Trigger a long, nothing happens. In other words, the market can drift sideways, and you can just be getting triggers but no confirmations. Again, don't get me wrong. You will get, in a sideways market, trigger, confirm, stop. Trigger, confirm, stop. That will happen. But even in this, this market that we've had for the last three and a half years, the system has made money. It's done much better this year. Why? Well, hey, we're now in a bull market. We're no longer going sideways. You've broken up. We're back in the bull market. And this contract that I'm trading at the moment, which would be the, 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 the I, I break my, my, my trading into the quarters. This last quarter, which we're in at the moment, the December 17 quarter, um, so far is looking at a really good quarter. Q3 was flat, thanks to a, a, a horrible week in August. I'll talk about that. Q2 was about 3,000 3, points, and Q1 was about 1,200 points. At this point, in this quarter, I'm about 2,000 points odd into the green, excluding my current trade. I never include my current trade because that's counting chickens that aren't yet hatched. I'm in a trade. My stop is in profit, but I don't count that until I'm out of that trade. I don't count those particular trades. Another very important point is although this is a long trade, this trigger candle could be red or green. In other words, I could, be, I could get a trigger to go long and that candle could be red. That's fine. All it means is that if it's a so green candle means that the top is the close. Red candle means the bottom is the close. What I want the next candle to be, close higher if I'm going long. So if this was a red candle, then I only need to close above that level, not above that level. I don't care what color the first candle of that trigger is. The, de the definition of whether it's obvious in a sec, a long or a short trade, is told to me by the direction of the cross. Why don't you close lower? If, you're going short. if I'm going short, I close lower. Yes. If I'm going short, I close lower. Be in a sec. So what I call, you're 100% right. I call that, I'm either, so in this system, I'm either long or short, or I'm triggered long or triggered short. I'm always in a state of, I'm never a case of, well, nothing's happening. I might be waiting, but I am waiting. So if I get a 721, seven crosses up, this is a trigger for a long, I'm waiting for confirmation. I wait, 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 wait. Either I get confirmation or seven goes below 21, now I've got a trigger for short, I wait for confirmation. Technically, technically, <laughs> technically those could both be red candles and I would have a long trade. Yeah. So the, I, I trade candles because I like the information I can get from them. In truth, for this system, all I care about is close price. I don't, the candles overkill for what I actually need. 
I, I use them because it just tells me more. I don't need that, 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 that extra knowledge in this trading system. Important point, I do not exit at targets. I'm a trend-based trader. Why don't I exit a target? Because when things run, they go crazy. I, I'm currently in a trade on the DAX. I think I'm 900 points in, up on that trade. The DAX is only at 13,000 points. I'm like 8% on, on the DAX. When I entered that trade, if I said to you, yeah, I'm going to ride this trade for 8% on the DAX, you Erks would have thought I was truthfully, we lack ambition. So I never exit at targets because as a trend-based trader, when things run, man, they run. They run and they run and they run and they do crazy stuff. Our market has been, I was having an a eagle Aussie trader was on Twitter and he was showing pictures of, 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 our, of, of the SA40. And what we've basically got, some chart pattern, blah, blah, blah. And he says, look, the breakout is typically up again. Our market has gone, I mean, we had the break out of the original range at 49 odd thousand on the toppy. Um, we've now gone, we're consolidating around 53,000. Everyone would tell you, man, we've got to come back and have a breather. That makes sense. But this is a market. There's no sense in a market. What do we do? Price. If this wants to break higher, it will break higher. Why would it do that? Who cares? Who, I mean, no, we can debate it. We can debate it over beers. But truthfully, it's a debate. We don't know, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what a market is doing or why it's doing it. We can never know, because there's just too much variables out there. So we don't even try and bother with it. Stop loss. So I use trailing stop. In other words, as my trade moves in my direction, my stop moves with me. As the trade comes back, the stop remains fixed. My stop loss level is average true range. What I'm doing is I take the one variable higher. Average true range is the process by why it says, so this is kind of like the range in, with, in which this market has been trading over the look back period. I use 14. So the last 14 trading days, almost three weeks, this, well, today and the 14 days is three weeks. This is that range the market's been trading in. So if I'm trading an hourly chart, I use a daily ATR. If I'm doing a daily chart, I use a weekly ATR. Because I don't want to get kicked out. I want that wiggle room so that it can come back down and then run again. So that you can get those big winners. Now, there's an issue with this. I'll touch it on it in a moment. Um, if the MAs cross against you, so I'm currently long this market. If the 7 goes below the 21 and gives a trigger, I get out. I don't wait for confirmation. If I'm in a trade and I get a trigger against the trade, I exit the position. Which means this doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, you'll typically find, not typically, you will find that you are exiting at a smaller distance than your stop loss. In other words, your stop loss is maybe 400 points away, but you'll exit at 200 points down because the MA is crossed on you. The challenge I'm having, and this happened to me in August, and I hate responding to events, but I've crunched numbers and I've looked at this, and when I say responding to events, I hate that something happens in the trading and you think to yourself, that wasn't fun, I must do something to prevent it happening again. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to retrofit, retrofit for an emotion that we felt. And that never plays well. The thing with this system is it will, typically on, an, on, 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 on the system, it will give you probably five. I, I expect it to happen five times a year, which means sometimes it will be six or seven, sometimes it will be three or four. It happened to me four times one week in August. You get into a trade, and it immediately goes against you. So you get hit out for full stop. Now, usually what happens, because of the two-step entry process, you get in the trade, it runs your way a bit, pulls the stop. Say my stop is 400 points. It pulls that stop, so now you're 300 points away, you know, in, in, in term, and then it turns on you. So you lose a percentage of your stop. But sometimes, in a market that's going nowhere, and it was the week of 16 August, if memory serves, um, four times in a row, I get in, market immediately goes against me, maximum stop. Hence, my Q3 profit, zero points. I think it was 12 or 7 or something, close enough to be zero. So I look at this and I think, OK, how can I potentially manage this process? I'm testing it. The process is what I do is I keep my trailing stop. So in a daily chart, my trailing stop is weekly ATR. But I also put a hard stop at two times 
daily ATR. So what we're sitting here, and if I use the hourly numbers, if I was in a daily, if I was an hourly chart, I would have a trailing stop of daily ATR, about 450 points. And then I'd have two times hourly ATR, about 250 points. So it puts the stop about halfway between the actual stop and the price. Yeah. And I'll show you the values, and they're going to scare the heck out of you. That's why I'm not showing them to you right now. What this does, so now I've got two stop losses in place. One is... 200 points away, one is 400 points away. The one 200 points away, fixed. It gets hit or it doesn't. The one 400 points away trails up behind me. And if the trade goes in my favor, the trailing stop will pass the fixed. If it doesn't, it will crash down and take me out earlier. So what this does is it means those trades where in immediate stop, instead of losing 100% of stop, I lose about 50 or 55% of stop. That's great. Here's the problem. There's going to be times when it goes down to that hard stop, goes down a little bit more, and now you're not in a trade. And now you hope like heckness that this is not the 10,000 pointer and you miss it. That's what you're giving up. Everything in trading is this, you know, give and take. I'll show you a run in the moment. Are you not better to take the medicine? My answer is, take the medicine. My answer is, this is great fun. But, so I, what I mean by testing it, I am not doing the hard stop. But I'm penciling it in and I'm seeing how this works. Because you know what, that medicine was horrible. But what it does mean, when I have a really bad week, I go to Amazon, I buy something, it arrives on Monday morning. So, you know, it's not bad medicine. Um, and, you know, to have four, to have four in one week, and in truth, I had two in one day. And it just, it, you know, I, I've been trading a long time, and that still battered the heck out of me. So, so that is then the other option. So it triggers the hard, it goes down. It doesn't hit the trailing. It then goes up again. Use that as your entry point back in. You could do that. Two points on that question. It, it's, it's crossed my mind. I haven't looked at the math. But two important points. There is an infinite number of ways of doing trading, and you've got, to, you've got to design this to fit you. And if you like that idea, then cool. More importantly, test it. So what I'm doing is I'm trading. I'm not doing this, but I'm, I'm doing it with a pencil, if that makes sense. So I'm saying, well, there is where it would be. Let's see how that works. Because I'll tell you what, as a trend trader, what matters. I've had, I've had two trades this year on the SA40 that have given me more than 2,000 points. If I miss one of them, my returns for the year are markedly less good. This could make me miss one of them. Now, the offset is those four trades in August cost me 2,000 points. But let's say I miss both of those 2,000-point runners. It's a trade-off. It's... it's which is why your idea might work, is, is a viable option, and say, well, if my hard is my out, maybe my hard is my back in. That unsettles me because of spread, slippage cost. And as sure as Murphy is watching, <laughs> you know exactly how that works. You get back in, Murphy's like, is he in? Is he? Ah, he's in. <laughs> Just, hey, calls. Why not? The point is, <coughs> don't be afraid to adjust my system or any other system. Do be afraid to adjust whilst trading, especially after a bad experience. This was a response to me having a bad week in the, in the trading box. I followed all the rules. They were perfect trades. But at the end of it, it didn't feel like fun. So like, it's like knee-jerk response. Trading is about, occasionally the market comes along with a great big badger and his, hits you over the head repeatedly until you say uncle. I, I don't know why we say uncle, but where I come from, that's the rule. Um, so that, that's the fear. And if you're going to, be the moment, great. If you're going to do, that's fine. Test it. My rule is simple. I will make changes at year end. I take a couple of weeks off over Christmas, and at that point, I will make changes to my system. I need to test them during the course of the year. Why do you use simple moving average? Because <laughs> that's what uh, IG offers. So in truth. No, it's actually more complicated. So back in the day when we were designing this system, and this system was designed by a bunch of us um, on a chat forum called Page 88 back in the early 2000s, um, 
we used simple. And, and at some point I said, why are we using simple? And the oak said, because we're simple. The, the bigger picture, and when I did my lazy system, which I use exponential, I, I run that, that system using simple, using weighted, using exponential. And the differences were minute, absolutely minute. They really are minute. So quickly, some pictures running through this. So this is uh, the DAX, German 30, 25 euros a point daily chart. There was your entry. There was your trigger candles, the green one. Next one's red, ignore it. Next one's red, but above. Trigger, that's your entry. In this case, that entry was about 12,370 or so. Uh, it was back in early September. Um, my ATR, 309 points. This is a daily chart, so I used weekly ATR. 309 points at 25 euros a point is, yeah, approximately what you folks said. However, we're still long, and we actually closed greener today. This was a screenshot from yesterday morning. Uh, the DAX is now at about 13,200, so we are sitting about 900 points in profit. My trailing stop is 309. And in fact, my stop is closer, because look at that third candle from the end, pulled my stop up. So my stop is currently sitting approximately down around 12, 850 or there's about. So my stop at this point is about 600 points in profit. That is a really, really nice trade. That is not the norm. I'll take it every single time, but I'll show you what is the norm in a moment, which is the, the, more, the more expected. So I'm busy tra trying this, and I'm not trading the 25 euro DAX, I'm trading the 5 euro DAX because I'm a coward. Or maybe I'm just sane. So I'm trading the baby DAX for now. Five euros a point is, 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 is about right, uh, which ironically is only slightly smaller than what I trade when I trade SA40, but nonetheless. So there it was, your seven crossed the 21. These are simples, boom. That green candle there is your trigger. That second red candle is your entry. You entered at the end of it. It's end of day, so you enter end of day, and so it runs and off you go. That was happening back on September 9, and, and then I think it triggered on 11, and we're still there now at the end of October. This trade has run for six or seven weeks. And I will continue to run it. Here is a GBP Euro daily. So here is a buy signal. That candle, the buy candle, is actually red. Second candle, red. Third candle, confirm. Stop on this, I can't recall. It runs, uh, and then we got stopped somewhere up there just before it crossed. Um, and then we got a, a short signal here. There's my short signal, there's my confirmation, and pretty quickly we get stopped on it. This one, then we then get booted out fairly quickly, and now we are long again. There was my confirmation, red candle, so I'm long again. This is from yesterday morning. The trade has moved a little bit on there. This type of noisy stuff that happens here is going to happen. It absolutely is. Again, daily chart, I use weekly ATR. Here is SA40. Let's go way back to off screen. Uh, we got a buy trade down here. It did very well. We got stopped up at about this point here somewhere. And then when this happens, it's terrible. Because now you're stopped out. And you're saying, please, 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 do not go to the moon without me. Do not be so mean and nasty. Uh, and it looked like it was. And then eventually we got a cross down, but only one candle, and then a cross back up, and then cross back down. This trade here, there was a short trade that triggers, there it is, that short trade triggers on that red candle there. But before you get taken, you actually get crossed back up. So you haven't taken, my stop on here on a weekly is about a daily chart. My stop's about 1,200 points. At this point, you're short on that nasty red candle just at the end of September, but literally within, you get taken out because of the cross-up. Now long again from early October, trigger, confirmation. I'm long from about 50,300, and today we closed just shy of 53,000. My stop is 1194 points. We have had a nice run in global markets. There will be, and make no bones about it, there have been periods where this has been a whole lot less fun. You know, we'd be looking at some chunky profits. We've got two trades here that are well into the money. But these are, you know, that SA40 is running, uh, and that uh, uh, DAX is massively running. I mean, that's a giant move. That is a move in the DAX of 
eight and a half, nine percent in seven weeks or so. That's a big, big move. If, DAX do, if the DAX does that in a year, the market is happy. The point is, when those happen, we want to be on that bus. This is what trading is about. You want to catch these biggies so that when you get the, the losing trades, they're paid for by the big ones. And then you get a slew of modest winners at the same time. Confirmation, as I said, can be a few or many candles later. If the MAs cross again, it's then, it's then failed, and now you're looking for a new trade to confirm the other direction, long or short. And as I said, don't worry about the colors of the candles. We can just use, in fact, you know, end of day or line chart is probably the better chart to use because the candles just add noise that we don't particularly need. I like candles, but line chart would do the trick absolutely perfectly. Yeah, so in a sideways market, one of the things you can try and do is find a time frame where there is more movement, um, either drop or go higher. So say you sit in an hourly, usually you could drop to 30 or 15. You could rise to four hourly, daily, weekly, whatever the case may be. Two challenges with it. One is, is, the, time, is the shift in time commitment. You know, if it's one thing to trade an hourly, if you then drop to 30 or 15, that has a massive implication. The, the bigger challenge is how do you define that that market is going sideways, and therefore you need to change your time frame. There are tools that supposedly do it. ADX is the one. ADX tells you um, whether the market is strongly trending or not. As, a, as, as direction agnostic, and there are others that try and do it. The problem is, is that when you go from a period of ADX is saying don't trade, then you're going to miss the first one or two trades when it says trade again, i.e. the market's got direction, and those might be big killer trades, and you you totally missed them. I, I, I've never found that holy grail. I've, I've never, I've, I, I've, I've been a trend trader for as long as I've been trading. The biggest problem with trend trading is those sideways markets. I have always been trying to find a way that can say to me, this market is going sideways, get out. I've never found something which increased my profitability over the longer period. Um, yeah, it would save me a couple of trades here and there, but then it would miss me a couple. You know, a market can be doing nothing and then suddenly spike one way or another. Um, you can even take things like ATR. You know, you could say if, if my average ATR is 1,200, if we drop to below 1,000, this market's going no way, pull out. But then suddenly some minister gets fired, something happens, some president wins an election, and boom, it's off to the races. I don't. Um, so there's two things. If I have missed an entry and my current entry is lower than what I would have entered at, in other words, it's favorable to me, I will take it. I, I'm not 100% comfortable with that because it means that I'm going long and the markets actually gave me a buy and went down, but I will take it. But I'll put my stop where it would normally be. In other words, I will take that some of that movement down. I'm not going to do my stop the full distance. If I'm, a, if I'm entering 100 points below where I should be, my initial stop is 100 points smaller than it would normally be to accommodate for. If it's run in my favor, I, I, I make a call. I will, I, and typically, when I say I make a call, 95 times out of 100, I will enter the trade. I will. And I'll tell you why. It's the fear of missing the, the biggies, of missing those 2,000-point trades. That's like, I've had two trades this year that made me 2,000 points on the SA40, and I think I've had three that have made me in excess of 1,200 points. Those trades are massively significant. And I would rather get 1,500 instead of the full 2,000 than miss the whole thing. Because if I miss the whole thing, then my whole system, those biggies are so important that if I miss them, the whole thing starts to become unstable. So typically, I just take it anyway. So then the process is, this is lacquer, but we're still screen gazing, especially if we're in an hourly time frame. And this thing works lovely. The charts I showed you there were daily time frames, but this works lacquer in the hourly. If you're trading FX, the four hourly works very, very well. Um, and I'm going to say to you, trade the daily, but even in that space, there's ways we can reduce our amount of effort. And if you're in the hourly, we certainly need to reduce it even more so, so that we can, you know, not worry about it until our phone beeps with an alert or something. So how do we set up alerts? And I'm using the, 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 the German 30 cash here. It doesn't matter which. You're on the chart. You click alerts. You click indicator. And you can say, uh, when the moving average 7 crosses moving average 21, Alert me. Important, at the end of the candlestick, I want close. And important, every time this happens. So this is your trigger, is automated and will give you an alert. If you're logged into the IG app on your phone, it will alert you on your phone. 
So you didn't have to check the chart every hour. You just got to, you know, at the end of every hour, just, oh, is there a message on my phone? Nope, cool, back in the pocket. So that you get those triggers coming through. So we're not constantly having to look at the chart and zoom in and, you know, put our glasses on and make sure we know what we're doing. We can just wait for the phone to vibrate in our pocket and tell us what's happening. So that's the first part. It's the trigger part. And then the second part is once you've got the trigger, so you set a price alert, same process. But instead of saying moving average, you say market price is over or under, depending long or short, whatever that candle close was. This is your confirmation. Again, at the end of the candlestick, and this triggers just once because it's viable for this trade. And once it's done, it doesn't matter anymore. So your 721 sits there permanently, and then your actual price point. So the 721 is your trigger. This is now your confirmation. Now, if you're doing end of day, it's less of a stress, five minutes to the end of the day. Certainly, if you're doing intraday candles, this is a lifesaver. Makes your life markedly easier. You just wait for the little... I mean, the trick is when you get off an airplane and the thing's like... It's like, too late, I was flying, but nonetheless. Takes that pressure off. And it comes back, I'll be in a sec. Comes back to that point... I don't want to spend eight hours in front of it. I don't even want to spend an hour a day. I mean, I enjoy watching charts, but I enjoy not having to watch charts. And I want to have that freedom to say, you know what, I can walk away. So, so there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a sneaky thing about, about IG, and I know you've tried it, where you can actually program this entire system into IG, give it money, walk away, and come back in a year. You're a braver man than me. <laughs> so... so <laughs> so, 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 so what you're trying to do, I hear you're 100%. As far as I'm able to make this IG platform work, I can't. I haven't, and, and I hear what you're doing. So you got that. Nice. You got the, tr the trigger. Now you've actually got to go and set the alert on a mobile phone with this tiny little screen and big fingers. And, you know, we're not all Donald Trump with small hands. Some of us struggle with these phones. Um, so you've now got to practically do it. There is a, a process. What do they call it? And I forget... Uh, where you can just you can actually automate the system into it. When I looked at it, I ran into some challenges with it in terms of what in terms of the rules I wanted to implement, and it wouldn't let me. So the the the, the trade screen, and I'm just showing this to you. Just a couple of important points. I trade at market, so I will accept partial full. Although in truth, what I'm trading, I, I've never had a partial full. But what I'm saying is, you know, if I want X contracts and you can only give me X minus, that's fine. I'm not thrilled, but but in truth, I also say market order. In other words, just hit the person selling. Don't stress me. Because you, know, you can do current price, which is limit, which says that price or nothing, and the market runs and you're left with nothing. Um, or you can say points through. I do, I'm trading liquid product. I'm trading SA40, which is of what I trade the least liquid, but is still massively liquid. I'm trading you know, major FXs. I'm trading DAX. There is plenty liquidity. I might get slippage. And what I mean by slippage is you see an indicative price there of 247, and maybe you get 248. Maybe you get 249. You know what? Sometimes you're going to get 246. Swings and roundabouts. When I want the trade, I want the trade. At the same time, I put my stop in. I'll come to that in a second. Guaranteed stops, hugely useful. Guaranteed stop protects you against black swans. It protects you against all sorts of things. The beauty, essentially, this is an insurance policy, but the point is you only pay for it when you use it. Now, I only exit at stop, so I always use it. But it's like you've got car insurance, but you actually smash the car, and then you give them money, and they pay you out. As opposed to the way car insurance does work, is you give them money, give them money, then you smash it, and they pretend they never heard of you. <clears throat> so guaranteed stops. And the cost of guaranteed stops is tiny. It, it, it's absolutely fractions. Trick can't trail the stops, which is a huge problem with the system that I'm trading. I want to be able to trail stops, which means I need to manually update. Now, you can do this during the course of the day. You can do it at the end of the day. Um, I'm doing it end of day. What it does mean is that if the market runs in your favor and then pulls you back and stops, the stop hasn't ramped up during that period. Guaranteed stop. I mean, here your guaranteed stop is going to is going to cost you one and a half points. So on DAX, it's going to be thirty-seven and a half euros. It's, uh, forget the euro amount. One and a half points is not massive by any stretch. And what it means is it doesn't matter what happens, you get that stop level. 
because you get slippage on stops. Stop gets triggered, and you get out a little bit worse off. Again, liquidity and the like, if you're trading high liquid, that slippage is, 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 is modest, but here yeah, you're guaranteed. Particularly, remember uh, uh, IG do 24-7 markets? And you get stopped overnight, the spreads are wider, because they, they, they basically want margin for the whole way down. But in, 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 in video two, in series two of this one, we spoke about the cash, and I took that into account when I was telling you what, how much cash you need to trade something. I was using the assumption that you're doing the guaranteed stops. Um, you can manually trail intraday, so this is just to set up a, a, a change within candle. So basically it's saying if my stop is 309 points, if we get a 309 point move within a candle, um, and it's a daily candle, I will get an alert. In other words, I can, so what I'm looking for is if my candle runs up and then comes down 309 points, I want to get out. My stop will be lower, but I want to get me out of it. Again, manual. But it, 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 it's, it's better than watching the market all day. It would be nicer if it could just somehow happen and, and, and be a little bit clever and, and, you know, tech will get there in time, by which case we will have other demands we want from our tech. Um, but it, we can still, we set the alert, now we can take our stress off the market. We will, be, we will be told, the market will come and say, hey, hey, Simon, tick, tick, we need you to do something. No, I, look, there are always risks. Your phone gets stolen. You, you, I mean, there, there's always those. Those are some of the realities to, to, to this process. It's, and and in, the, in the first video in this series, I talked a lot about trading being a business. And with trading, the risk is that, you know, you, as a business, the risk is someone steals your hot dogs or, or you know, the fridge goes off and they, they go off and stuff. There certainly are risks that are beyond our control. You know, to me, I'm on, I'm on data. Yes, I'm with MTN. But does the MTN network go down? Sure. Often? doesn't matter. If it happens, it's bad. So then testing, trusting. And Christia, this comes to the point that you were making. What's critically important is we test our systems, we trust our systems, we know our systems. And that's for a bunch of reasons. Because when you get drawdowns, you need to be sure that you'll be able to trade through the drawdowns. We need to make sure that we're not going to get stressed. We need to understand what that expectation is in terms of what's going to happen from the system. But also what this does is it makes you, and I spoke about this a lot in the first session, it makes you the pro of the system. And although with IG you can program it in, it will do the, the back testing for you, I, I see little value in that for a bunch of reasons. Key is that a big part of that testing process is that by doing the manual testing, you become the pro on the system. You've seen everything. You know, two red candles which are telling you to go long doesn't surprise me because I've seen it in my back testing. So the, the, Mark Doug just talks about it. At least 20 back test trades, at least 20 demo trades in real time, and at least 20 small trades. I think 20, 20, 20 is far too small. I think you want to do 50 to 100 of your back test trades, and then we'll just go back a couple of years and work your way forward candle by candle. It is laborious, it is painstaking, it is painful, it is invaluable. It's invaluable because you start to see how it works. You start to see that you're going to get a run of losing trades, and it makes you scared while you're just testing it. But it makes you, you know, what is that expectation that you should have for when you're actually trading this with the real cash? The demo gives you a much better sense of how it works, and then, as always, you start small, and you scale yourself up slowly. Different time frames. So I've been, as I said, trading hourly and four hourly for FX. I'm going to be dropping to daily at the end of the year, which gives me less trades, gives me longer trades, gives me bigger profits and bigger losses and bigger drawdowns. If losses and drawdowns in particular scare you, maybe look at starting in the hourly or even perhaps a four hourly on the FX charts. Because those smaller time frames, you know, I'm looking at uh, my DAX, my 309 point, let's use the SA40 because I know the numbers. Um, if I'm in an hourly chart, my stop is about four, 450 points. If I'm in a daily chart, my stop's 1,000 to 1,200 points. That has a big impact on your brain. Now, in truth, <clears throat> the profit on the daily is better because I don't get slippage, it's blah, blah, blah. But, you know, how do you feel about taking a 1,200 point hit? And that's just how it is versus a 400 or 450 point hit, which is why it might be valuable and it's time dependent in your ability to do it. There's ways we can manage it with alerts. We actually start in the hourly. Have as your, your end goal to trade daily, sure. But you start in the hourly. Couple of things. Firstly, in that testing phase, things are coming at you faster. 
So you're getting more experience of the system, of the process, of the profit and losses, of the emotions of winners and losers. And secondly, your drawdowns are less scary. Your losing trades are smaller. Your winning trades are smaller as well, but you know, forget the winners. What's going to hurt you and emotionally and, and, and everything else are going to be those losers, which is why, and I, I don't regret spending this year trading the hourly. Because as I said, it means I've got trades coming at me. I'm probably by the end of the year going to have done 120, 130 or 40 trades just on the SA40. That's nice experience. You know, it means when I had that horrible week in August, it was horrible, but yeah, it was just, you know, 2,000 points. There's no upside to it, but it, it wasn't an hourly. So there might be something to be said. And there's a lot of questions, if buts and maybes, in terms of your time and your free time and whether that's viable. To start in the hourly, become the pro there, and then perhaps slip up to, 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 week, to, week, uh, to daily rather in time. This chart, this does work in weekly, but man, you've got to be a brave person to trade this in a weekly chart. Your stops run out on the SA40 to about 3,500 points. I can't do that. I, no. Scaling up, as I said, be careful. Start with SA40. SA40, you've got to trade too many contracts. You can start that with 20,000 Rand. You can start it in an hourly contract. Nice, simple. Probably no one's going to die if you lose 20,000 Rand. It won't be fun. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you're going to really have to be... It's going to take a lot of... It, it, takes, it, takes, it takes an immense amount of skill or an immense amount of lack of precision, i.e. discipline, to actually bust out a portfolio. Trust me, I know, I've done it three times. But if you put some rules in place, simple rules in place, there's no reason you should bust out. The truth of the matter is I think busting out is a rite of passage. I don't know a successful trader who hasn't busted out. And some of you haven't busted out, and that just ruined your evening. Um, and, and, and no, but maybe you are the exception. Maybe, look, and I, I was busting out in the 90s, man. We barely were, you know... Sometimes the pigeons were quicker than the internet. So, so, but, but there's almost a sense. But the busting out is because we're not following process. And I said up front, trading's about process. And the simplest process will stop you busting out. If you're trading that many with 20,000 grand, you need to lose 5,000 points to go bust. Special skill to lose 5,000 points. Trust me. Done it. <laughs> uh, offshore credit currency, we have touched on this, and I'm running time. So to conclude, we don't want to be traders. We want the benefits of trading, which is the ability to be anywhere with an internet connection, not Vodacom necessarily, um, and therefore be able to trade. We want the benefit of the money. We don't want to spend. And maybe we want to be market technicians and spend hours every day in front of a chart. But then maybe we would rather go fishing and hopefully not catch fish because that really gets geeky when you do yeah, we want to do whatever we want to do we don't want to be traders that's not what we're particularly necessarily aiming for start small start slow scale up slowly the biggest mistake folks make they come in they have a good week they scale up a month later they bust out and they're gone and it's just not worth the risk because if we get this right the implications are humongous um, trade one system and become the pro at that it doesn't matter what system. There's an, there's an infinite number of systems. What the system is is not the importance. The importance is to trade it. And if you go through the testing process, you'll quickly work out if this system's good, bad, or ugly. And if it's bad or ugly, throw it away and, and, and tweak it and find one that works. But do a proper testing process to decide that this system works and then scale up that process very slowly. And then it is about the discipline. It's about doing the right things. It's about finding a system, testing it, saying it works, and then trading it, not for a week, a month, or six months, for two to three years, to doing tweaks smallly, incrementally at year end. It's about saying, I want to be independent. I want that freedom from ties. I want to be that profitable trader. But I appreciate that this is going to take three to five years of effort, of discipline, of at times pain and tears and even maybe occasionally some blood. Hopefully not yours. Trading is immensely rewarding. The biggest problem with trading is that the rules are whatever you want them to be. And as much as we all like to pretend we're anarchists and that we do it our way or my way, as Sid Vicious would have said, 
um, when he was spoofing Frank Sinatra, which is way better than Frank. Go find the Sid Vicious version of My Way. Infinitely better than Frank Sinatra could ever do it. Just saying. Um, the problem is, is that that infinite of scope just gives us space to get our head kicked in. And what we need to do is we need to bring those rules in, and then there are rules. And the problem is when there are our rules is that when they hurt us, we hate them more. It's bad when your rule hurts me, man, but then at least I can hate you. <laughs> no, when my rule hurts me, now what do I do? What I typically do, abandon the rule. No one likes to self-inflict pain, and that's the mistake. The rule is there for a purpose. I say it takes incredible skill to lose 20,000 Rand if you trade in the, the SA-40 Mini. In truth, it takes no skill. It's like snip, snip, it can all be gone. But if you put some rules in place and we stick to them and we adhere to them, we succeed. The reason we don't succeed at trading is because of us, because we don't have a plan, because we're all over the place, because we lack discipline, because we're just like, ah, oh, I just want to be rich. Can't they just deposit money into my account for me? And the answer is no. We've got to go through that process. And it will be tough and slow, and then it will become less tough and less slow, and at times it will snot clap you like it did to me that one horrible week in August. Partly those weeks in August, I'm expecting it. Why? Because the testing said to me that I'm going to get four or five of these a year that are going to hit me down. And ironically, that Sunday evening, Pier 3 Raiden Hayes was in Joburg, and I was talking my system, and I said to him, it's going too well. I said, I'm due a snort club. I then go to Cape Town, spend a week in Cape Town with Pier 3, and I get snort club four times in a row. So there was almost a sense of expectation. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't fun. But I was looking at my system, and I wasn't saying, man, I'm the best genius trader in the world. I'm like, this is going too well. Nothing goes that well for that long. There has to be a drawdown. I was, and, just, and, and then it came. It didn't make it less painful, but at least when it was there, it was like, okay. Look, I kept on you know, wanting it to end, but, but it, then it does end. But you've got that expectation. And because you've got that expectation, it makes the pain less bad. It makes the, 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 the loss still exactly the same, but you're prepared for it. It also means that when you're riding high, don't say, well, I'm having the best year ever. I'm going to double trade size. Because then you have the worst week of your trading, and you've just doubled your trade size, and your loss is, well, twice the size. Do the testing. Do the tweaking. Try the demo accounts. The key thing, the reason why I want manual back testing, the reason why I say demo trading is so that you learn the system, both the trading system and the trading platform. So that when you do that first trade, one of my stockbrokers, the worst thing in the world they do to me is when I hit a trade button, they pop up and they say, are you sure? The answer is not a clue. Stop asking personal questions. <laughs> Now, what they're doing is like this double, and instead of saying, are you sure, what they should say is, please double check. The language of are you sure is, is, is like, no, I'm not sure. I'm definitely, no, I, I've never been more unsure in my life. And you don't want that to happen to you the first time you do a live cash trade, because what's the answer? Shut everything down, go away. You want to like, so now when I do a trade on that platform, I anticipate. And it comes up and it says, oh, are you sure? And I'm like, middle finger to you. Damn, yeah, I'm sure. Stop asking rude questions. But you need to know that that's coming. Because I tell you what, the number of failed trades, not failed trades, you can see it on the system. New person signs up, does stuff, does first trade, hits confirm, and then disappears. Well, of course, yes, because you asked, are you sure? It's the first trade you've done in your life. Of course, you're not damn sure. So it's that, anticipation. You know what's coming, being prepared for all those bits and pieces. As always, lawyers, contact details. Ladies and gents, I'm going to park it there because I've run my time. I will chat after if you've got more questions. We will be back on the 18th. That invite is up on the... the, the um, the uh, uh, IG website as we speak, it is Joburg only for those in the webcast, and if you're watching the video post the 18th of November, that boat has flown. In essence, it's my system. I'll have more time on it. It's Garth McKenzie, some trading, and it's the scalping system for trading uh, FX on non-farm perils. Key point is start doing something. Start, what are you trying to achieve? Work at it. Go back, watch video one. It's a business. 
Work this through. What are you trying to do? How are you going to do it? What are the bits that are important? What system do you want to do? Whose system do you want to trade? Do you want to tweak it? Somebody commented that maybe 5 and 15 was better than 7 and 21. Go and test that. See if that's true. Um, is it better? Does it give you more trades, less trades, longer trades, shorter trades? Do you prefer shorter trades? Do you prefer hourly, daily? As I said, there's no rules. That's part of the problem. You've got to make those rules. But critically important, make those rules fit you. We don't have to fit the market. We, the market must fit us in what we're trying to do. Ladies and gents, appreciate your time. Everyone have a good evening further. <laughs>